I've been reading books about magic of the serious kind, not, not the rabbit kind of, of magic, yeah. Yeah. since I was a little boy. And I, uh, then when I was a teenager, I joined the um, OTO, the Ordo Templi Orientis. So I'm a lifetime member. And I'm what is called 11th degree, ancien degree. Yeah, yeah. Not 12, 12, I don't forget about it. But I'm 11, so. But, oh, oh, what's the reason why you get first interested in the, uh, everything occult and magical? Why? Because my temperament suits it. Mm. And I feel very much at home with it. Mm. It isn't like an alien, strange thing. To me, it's, it's familiar. It's natural, yeah. Natural, yeah. Um, and today, there are so many uh, images all around through the internet, uh, videos, TV, etc. And uh, when you first start, of course, the image, moving image pictures were, were not that well spread. So what do you, what do you think uh, of, uh, of modern time with all, all images all around in the internet, uh, everything? So well, I don't know. You see, I refuse to even have a television. Mm -hmm. No television. I consider it, it, it saps your, your brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it, yeah. I don't have it, no. And so th there is a great proliferation of images. It's like a plague. <laughs> you know, it's like a rain of too much stuff. Yeah. Modern Hollywood is, is boring. It's business. There's no good scandals. It's been a while since we've had a good Hollywood scandal. And the scandals are, for me, they're the, the kind of lifeblood that prove that there are real people, you know? So uh, I miss the old days. But I was a little boy when this, some of the scandals started, like the death of um, Thelma Todd, who was a great comedian beauty, and she was found dead in her garage, in the, in the car, with the, the motor was going and the fumes from the car. And whether it was murder or suicide or accident, you know, it doesn't, doesn't know, but that, that's what intrigues me. When, when you, it's like speculation. Well, he was, he was a evil little rat. He was a, a very short little guy. I never met him, though. But unfortunately, my friend uh, Bobby Bolsole, who did some unpleasant things, I gave him an apartment. I had an apartment in, in what was called the Russian Embassy in um, the Haight-Ashbury a beautiful uh, Victorian house that's now a listed house, like you can't change it. And I, but he um, took some of my money and went to Southern California and came back with an enormous uh, wrapped up plastic black thing, I didn't know what it was, and my dog sniffed it. Uh, and it turned out it was a big, a uh, kilo of uh, marijuana. And it, it, but he was like a minor. He was like 19 years old, and I was adult. If it had been found in my house, I'd be put in prison because of the laws. Yeah, so he was putting me at risk, bringing it back. So I said, take your goddamn marijuana and get out, leave. So that's the way we broke up. And I had. I had a van, he took the car and drove it to Southern California where it broke down in front of the Span Ranch where uh, Manson was holed up with his girls. And the girls came out and saw this attractive young man and said, move in with us. <laughs> so so it's reason why you get involved in that. Yes, it's like a fate, you know, like a very unfortunate uh, set of almost like diabolical circumstances. Yeah. You should know that I'm still making films. I've been making them all my life since I, I began, made my first film, Allage de Huit Ans, 
on 16 millimeter. And I made uh, a few films on 35, which is very expensive for when you're not in the industry. But I made La Lune de Lapin here in Paris on 35 millimeter. Um, and there's a producer named Pierre Bromberger that very kindly lent me his studio. So I built the set and everything. And uh, it was with the help of the Cinematheque that they found me a cameraman, Turjansky, a very good cameraman. And uh, so I found um, uh, living in Paris very sympathetic. <laughs> so thank you very much for your okay. time. All right. Yeah. So okay. I met Henri Langlois in 1950. And I had come over from uh, California because my films had been shown at the Festival de Film Modi in Antibes. And uh, it, Jean Cocteau awarded it a prize. And I wanted to meet Cocteau, which I did, and I wanted to meet Henri Langlois of this famous Cinematheque. And um, Henri Langlois offered me a job at the Cinematheque, helping with, they had a lot of silent films that were American, but were without the right titles because of the translation from the French to the, to the English. And he wanted to research the original titles. So I was able to help him on that. As the advisor for us. Yeah, I saw. I was, and I already knew my film history pretty well, because that's been my uh, study since I was a little boy. <laughs> and so uh, I worked for Henri Langlois for 12 years, including the tr he had uh, you know, considerable tr trouble with uh, 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 Malraux. And uh, rather unpleasant uh, things happened. And then I was also there during the fire. There was a terrible fire. We were having lunch. It was very hot August, uh, two blocks away. And he had left, he, he, he had only one print of Honeymoon, which is the second part of Wedding March, uh, the rare film late uh, silent film of um, Eric von Stroheim. And so it was left to collect by the, uh, um, the people that pick up films for the, to take, uh, for, to travel. And it was left under a porte cochere, which is a glass, and the, the hot sun beating on the glass at noon made the film explode. And so the last print of Wedding March was, of Honeymoon, was lost. And of course, it was foolish. Of, it was being lent to Sao Paulo, because he already had very good relationship with Brazil. But it was foolish to, uh, the only print uh, of course, he should have had a copy made, yeah. you know, that's, yes, afterwards you think of these things. But it, it was a big uh, fire, it went, and um, it was one of the tragedies. But I had very good times with Henri Langlois and his companion, very important, uh, Mary Mearson, <laughs> the widow of Lazar Mearson, the famous set designer for René Clair. E. E. Double M. A. N. E. Double M. A. A. N. U. Okay.